Okay, I'm back uh, for, uh, to take a closer look at what's inside this case to make all this work. Uh, you can see a lot of wires coming out of here at the bottom. There was a, quite a bit of wiring. And uh, this, of course, this case does not come with the DDCSV 2.1. This I bought this case on the, uh, from polycase.com. It's a pretty nice website with a lot of polycarbonate cases. You can probably hear the fan running. Um, I'll show you. I did put a pretty uh, big AC fan in there because uh, there's uh, three 60 volt power supplies. There's three um, uh, stepper controllers. And then, of course, there's the DDCSV uh, 2.1, uh, all which generate a little bit of heat. The air comes out on the bottom. The fan is on the back, drawing the air in through a filter. Um, and it's a changeable filter. Uh, if you're going to be doing grinding, anybody that does grinding knows it makes a lot of dust. So um, I didn't want that dust accumulating in the control cabinet. Um, you can see back here, here's some of the limit switches that uh, protect the z-axis from overrange but a properly you know executed program would never uh, hit the limits but they are there for safety purposes and then the, all those limit switch signals go back here all the stepper motor signals come out of here the uh, MPG pendant I've got it wired to a 25 pin um, D sub connector um, and then of course that's just my compressed air there I'm gonna move that aside because we're gonna open this case up and I'll show you what's inside there um, before I do that though let me give you a quick view of the screen here and uh, and you know what what uh, the screen looks like on this it's a very nice LCD um, and um, so uh, these coordinates this is machine coordinates uh, and then this is what uh, G54 which is what I'm using right now um, I've got it in inch mode uh, the controller is mostly designed for millimeters uh, but they have a uh, accommodation for, you know, uh, SAE and, you know, Imperial inch people. Um, one request I have in is that they increase the resolution to four digits. The millimeter resolution goes to three digits, so it seems very reasonable that inch should also be four uh, digits. And I think they're going to do that. Um, of course, that's the absolute coordinates. Um, the controller has accommodations for probes. It has accommodations for homing. So if you want it to automatically home to a zero, uh, like to a mark on your glass scales or something like that, it'll do that. I don't have that feature wired up now. Um, but um, uh, so, you know, if I was using the, uh, right now, if I was going to use the hand wheel um, to move the x-axis, you can see it, it display very nice. It shows the feed speed. It shows the spindle. If I turn the spindle on, so there's spindle off, spindle on, and also does spindle RPM. I have it wired up. I have it wired up so I can control the spindle RPM. So this can give an analog output, a zero to ten volt command, if you want variable spindle RPMs. Of course, on a grinder, you probably want it either on or off. So. That's the main thing that it does here. Um, there is a fourth axis here, the A axis. So if you had a rotary, uh, you know, table indexer, you could wire that up. I don't have any of the fourth axis wired up right now. Um, and then the modes up here are uh, MPG, which is what I was doing with the hand wheel. Uh, continuous means if I push the buttons, then the axes will move from these buttons. Um, step mode will do an incremental step, and then back to MPG. If I push start, that's, it'll run whatever program is listed up here. And those, those just come in on a USB stick, real easy to upload on a USB stick. Um, there's a uh, file page. This shows what's on my USB stick. I've just got two programs I've been tinkering with. And then this parameter page uh, has a large number of parameters that you can set to customize uh, your you know, working environment including telling it you know how many pulses per inch uh, and for your axes and what accelerations you want for each axis um, uh, what the speed select you know maximum speeds uh, whether or not to respond to limit switches all kinds of stuff very well thought out um, and it's a it's an amazing uh, controller for the price um, okay so let's take a look uh, let me show you what's exactly what's inside here let me back up pull back a little bit and um, 
and uh, let's take this hand wheel off of here and I'm going to turn it off as well. You'll hear the fan go off. My on off switch is on the back here on a power entry module. And so that fan is, it's not quiet, but it's not loud, but I think it's perfect because I want to be able to hear the fan when it's running to confirm that it's still, you know, the fan is still operating properly, but I don't want it so loud that it's annoying. But um, let me show you what, what I had to put in here um, and the wiring that goes along with it here. By the way, these new DeWalt gyro screwdrivers are fabulous. If you don't have one, $99 with two batteries, it's a, they're, I love it. Okay, so here's what's in here. And you'll see what I did. Uh, I've got, uh, there's chains. I don't know if you can see the chains here. Uh, you know, because of the wiring, I didn't want any chance of anybody yanking that there. Uh, let me just pan the camera down just a little bit here so you can see what we're looking at. Um, so here's the back of the DD uh, CSV 2.1. Um, it's all terminal blocks and wiring. Um, there's the USB port. There's an extension cord that goes down to where my USB stick is. But there is quite a bit of wiring to get one of these work to work. Uh, but so this controller. Uh, I think $275, and then um, uh, the kit that I bought with the NEMA 34 motors was about $400 for the three motors, the three controllers, and three 60-volt power supplies. And you saw that those steppers move very quickly. Um, you know, they accelerate quickly, and they move quickly, and the secret is, you know, if you've tinkered with steppers, you're like, how do you get them to go so fast? The secret is high voltage, so this is a constant current high voltage stepper source and the controllers make it really easy because they do all the hard work for you and you just program the uh, number of steps per rotation uh, on these pin bases. These also can do micro steps, so something on the order of like uh, 50,000 steps per resolution. I'm not using it at that high a level, I think I'm, I'm using the um, one of the axes at 10,000 steps per resolution but um, you know the z-axis you might want to turn up a little bit because you want fine control there um, there's my main fan back there I just rigged in a wall wart uh, for 24 volts because the DDCSV 2.1 needs a 24 volt power supply I think that was 24 um, pretty sure that's what I've got on it it's 16 to 32 volts and I've got a 24 volt supply in there um, and lots of airflow especially whooshing over these controllers. These supplies all have their own fan, so uh, as long as they're in a box full of cool air, they'll be happy. And um, seems to work pretty good. I'm very happy with it so far. A uh, few minor bugs I'm still working out, uh, but I think this is going to be a useful machine, and it's going to make my grinding uh, a lot easier. I'll be able to set stuff up and hit go, and then uh, you know go enjoy some coffee while the machine does the work instead of me. But uh, I hope this is helpful. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, please put them below. Uh, I love it when people subscribe. I'm going to try to do more videos. Um, and uh, uh, again, Tom Matthews from Matthews Engineering. And I hope all your projects are going well.